I would like to thank our top sponsors Bergemo, Matthias Preu, Fergus Ryan and Diego for making this show possible. And welcome to the Cave of Apelles. Tonight's guest celebrates the sensuality of the human body, paired with an acute sensibility to value and tender moments. Apart from a three-year study period without Nerdrum, she is mostly self-taught and lives off of commissions, collectors and exhibitions. She views imitation as natural and agreed to sit down and talk about the everyday challenges of working classically as well as her favorite painters from past and present. Kaya Norum, welcome to the Cave of Palace. Thank you. Now, you've already been on our show in a certain sense, in a school video. Yes. And uh, this is your charcoal drawing here yeah. on the wall. We'll get to that, but first we want to know the real Kaya Norum. Who are you? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well. Mm. Well, I'm Norwegian, obviously, <laughs> and uh, that's my identity. No, <laughs> <laughs> you identify as Norwegian. Yes, yeah. I identify as Norwegian. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was always very occupied with drawing and um, being, you know, creative as a child. Mm. So uh, I think my uh, my parents saw that very early. So uh, so they thought that in order to um, to develop those skills. Uh, they thought that uh, I should go to the Waldorf school instead of uh, public school, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, you know, you, you're probably familiar with, uh, with the Waldorf. Uh, no? No, it's, it's founded by Rudolf Steiner. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, uh, so it's, uh, you know, he also founded uh, anthropology, anthroposophy, yeah. I guess, yeah. Right. And uh, so he based the education on... Um, focusing on the development of uh, spiritual and artistic uh, development in children. So the education is very adapted, I think, to children in that sense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of creative uh, subjects, you know, and um, yeah. So I was in primary school and secondary school. I went to older school and, uh, and also high school. But, you know, in the first early years, it was great, I think, for me. I uh, I was very encouraged uh, by the teachers and everything, and uh, but um, going to um, high school was a little bit different. Was that that was uh, public school or no? That was no. also Waldorf, but oh. it was more I think in modern in a sense. You know, they didn't follow the uh, Steiner philosophy that strictly. Okay, I feel. So, you know, you choose a subject in Norway you can choose in high school if you want to to focus on art or music or, you know. So I was in art classes mostly and um, I could, I you know, quickly I felt that uh, there was some sort of hostility against the classical values really? in school. There were a lot of, uh, you know, typical modern art, um, uh, values that they uh, that they were talking about, you know, uh, among some of the teachers, not all of them. But uh, I had this teacher in art history, which uh, she was always very, uh, I don't know, she, she frequently pointed out, you know, you have to be part of your time. This was back then, you know, she showed us pictures of old masters and stuff. And she's like, but you have to be concerned with, you know, belonging to your time and being original and stuff like that. So, so I was, I didn't know where that came from. I didn't know it was like an you know, ideology at that point because I didn't know anything about that. But um, I didn't agree with her, and I uh, felt like that didn't appeal to me at all because I, I was looking at these old masters and uh, and I was like, I want to paint like that. Why can't I paint like that? You know. Even if I live now, <laughs> you know, what's the point? So, because, uh, yeah, that had always appealed to me. 
But anyway. At that point, did you, you had drawing classes or? or yeah. You, yeah, we you had. did actually learn figure drawing or? No, we didn't. Well, uh, yeah, actually we had uh, this live model sessions in school with drawing. Um, but it was also like color, you know, yeah, and, and uh, sculpture classes and everything. And uh, yeah, and, yeah, but she, I think she was the most like modernistic kind of, you know, mm. she had those views. So, uh, and basically I started skipping her classes because I didn't agree with her. Because <laughs> she had art history. Art right? history, yeah. Right. No, no practicing. Um, no practicing. Yeah. No, 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 no. So she, yeah. Which is uh, typical, right? They are yeah. not able to do it themselves. They just exactly. have a theoretical idea. Yeah. And there was this other teachers as well that was also because we were supposed to explore, you know, our own, you know, feelings and stuff. So they were like, you have to no, you can't be representational. You have to kind of dig deeper, you know. So, but every time I tried to be original, I ended up with something I didn't like looking at. So I was like, yeah, I, uh, I didn't agree with that. And um, now the art history teacher, now she's an art critic in uh, Norway's uh, state channel. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, you know, <laughs> I know it is. Yeah. <laughs> people won't, uh, shouldn't be bothered with knowing her name because no. it's, it's just it's a typical one of those theorists uh, who knows how to behave, what to say, what to feel. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. but uh, yeah, so Odd was always my idol, you know, from very early. Because uh, when I was like six years old, I think it was, I I got this uh, big book of his from my parents, actually. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I was like, at first I thought that he can't be alive, you know, it must yeah. be like an old master or something. And then they were like, no, no, he's, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was amazed by that and I was... Uh, yeah, and that's when it uh, it started. And I actually remember this funny story. It was the first time I saw Odd. It was in the National Gallery with my parents. And I was I was very young, like se seven, maybe six, seven years old. And uh, he was there with a group of uh, people. I guess it was students. And then he touched one of the paintings, so the alarm went off. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the gallery and then this guard came running over and it was very dramatic for me it looked very <laughs> and he has this aura you know because so I, I immediately like oh my dad said that's uh, that's old Nordrum that's, that's <laughs> he's the guy with not just <laughs> yes and I was like wow this is my hero <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh, that was my first uh, yeah experience with odd yeah. basically so now you go around touching paintings in the museums right yeah and uh, yeah, so I was uh, occupied with him from very early. And uh, when I started studying with him, it was very random because uh, really? I, yeah, yeah. Cause I didn't know he had students. But then this friend of a friend knew somebody that was studying with him, this girl. And uh, she put me in contact with Turid and uh, eventually I was invited to come here to paint. So for a weekend or something. Right. And I was in my final year in high school at that point. Yeah, so you were, what, 17? Eight, ni Eight. 19. 19. 19. 18 okay. or 19, I think, yeah. yeah. Hmm. And um, I brought a painting with me that was uh, painted from photo, obviously. And because uh, I didn't know, yeah, 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 what else to do. We didn't, yeah. And uh, with acrylics. So, but odd, uh, I don't know if he was very impressed with it but he he was like oh you can start start come here after after you yeah. finish school you can come and study yeah. and i was like what because <laughs> that was just amazing for me i don't yeah. know where i would have ended up if i uh, <laughs> if i hadn't started studying with him because yeah. i was so sick of school and uh yeah so i had skipped so many classes in school <laughs> so yeah so he basically saved you from organized crime. Yes, I yeah. think so. He <laughs> saved me. He, yeah. And I, yeah, I got here and I, and I got so many friends, uh, made so many friends because there were so many like-minded people here. And uh, also, very quickly, I, because all this, uh, basically a philosopher himself, and he talks about philosophy all the time. So then I suddenly understood like where that hostility came from that I had experienced in um, 
among the teachers, you know. And I thought, ah, oh, because it was the Kant philosophy hmm. that he was talking about. And, hmm. uh, and I was like, that makes total sense, you know. And, um, and I don't think the people that are advocating these ideas necessarily know where their ideas come from even yeah i was going to ask so, you yeah. uh, I, I always ask that question i think i know the answer yes but it's interesting to hear this uh, now famous art critic in norway who was a teacher in art history did she ever explain why you have to be in your time why you have to be original i mean one thing is to say that you have to but that's not an argument that's not showing you because of this you have to do that mm. Did no, I, I can't really remember, but I don't think she did explain that very well. I don't think so. It was it was maybe about, um, you know, uh, uh, moving forward, you know. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I, it's not a good argument, I think, but because uh, you're moving backwards eventually. <laughs> 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 you're trying to be original because it's not possible. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not original. We're, human beings are not original right so yeah it's self it's self-defeating process if you want yes. to if you if you want to make something original of that, that is your goal then you are going further and further away from the human condition and from what we all know yeah I mean, yeah that's my experience at least when you learn something it's in a painting mm. or something that that you haven't thought about it's just from a different angle or you actually do know it somehow mm. but you weren't aware of it and then mm. oh yes that makes me aware of what, whatever mm. thing we're talking about yeah i've always been uh, you know drawn to it so yeah. the classical uh, yeah and um and i think like from we're babies we imitate our parents so it's natural to make imitations and uh like maybe maybe that the pleasure we take in in uh, looking at imitations, such as a painting, for instance, is maybe the pleasure we take in learning. Because mm. we, you know, we want to learn new things and we want to um, reach for, I don't know, reach our highest potential, I guess, yeah. I think, naturally. Um, yeah, and I think there's, um, there's that confirmation also when you see a, a painting or you watch a movie that is gripping or mm. I mean this is what pe people always say when they have some kind of problem yes and then they talk about it afterwards they say oh I thought I was the only one yeah and then it turns out that people identify with that and that's sort of I guess one thing that a painting can do for you you recognize just just the fact that there's another human mm. being existing mm. and that has some kind of comforting mm. effect on you yeah doesn't necessarily necessarily have to be like you have experienced exactly that uh, yep. you know that thing, but uh, yeah, it's like you're saying it's the universal aspect. I think yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah, and I, I think that can just be in the central rendering of of the skin. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Well, this is a nice segue to your yes. drawing here. Thank you. <laughs> did you say it was a nice drawing? <laughs> I was like, thank you. I think you. I did say so, because <laughs> yeah. it's exquisite. Oh, it has really you. nice movement. Um, um, and this is charcoal? It's, yeah, it's pencil and graphite and uh, charcoal. And it's actually something called uh, casein. Okay. Casein, it's right. like a yeah. milk protein. I don't know if yeah. you've heard of it. Yeah. Molly Judd, she, she told me about this and she said, you should try it. It's very nice you can just glaze the um, drawing and it makes this like luminous effect right yeah right i haven't tried it actually no but it, you do get a very very uh, um soft yeah atmosphere mm. i mean I, and i do think that's um and yeah because that, that also relates to uh, i was thinking about this idea of of beauty that we talked about mm. um, before recording um and you've been concerned with that and i think this probably is connected to your concern with beauty yes right yeah i mean you know it's not about just painting a beautiful face necessarily it's, uh, that's not what it is about i think it's yeah. It's more about uh, harmony and um, universal, you know, 
qualities and the whole i think that's all connected to beauty yeah in the end so uh making something that people feel related to right I so think, yeah. yeah so it's not just a beautiful face or a beautiful body or a yeah. calm yeah. Uh, posture it's or the something. poetry it has yeah. to be a little bit more poetic than that you know right but uh you can you can paint somebody ugly an ugly yeah. well you can have an ugly model and it can be a beautiful portrait so yeah right right yeah yeah and i think yeah if you lose that in uh, you know like in the conceptual art world today it's all about being original they're kind of forgetting about that uh beauty aspect yeah. of it and then you lose that you, you i think you end up with ugliness um because you have to in order to be original that means you have to stand out somehow right and um and that yeah. maybe you have to be offensive or shocking or and that's not uh, you know it usually that's not beautiful doesn't have any yeah you know what yeah I mean? I mean this is something that um <coughs> the uh, james stevens curl uh, defines it quite uh, precise when it comes to that aspect of beauty in the interview that carl koshnas did with him here oh yeah where with just his definition of of beauty that it doesn't um offend you that is uh, yes yeah, more um, sense of belonging and yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. because i I'm, i've been thinking about that 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 beauty if you take it as sort of a neutral term yeah i guess it has to do with that we recognize this bending of the back of mm. uh, yeah is it adam and eve Yes, it's right? Adam and Eve. Yeah. It's, uh, it is inspired by. Uh, uh, I saw this painting in the National Gallery by uh, Hans Heyerdahl. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was a sort of a child or young prodigy. Uh, you know, it's really good. Uh, yeah. It? yeah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And uh, of course, this male here is very inspired by Odd's painting. You probably recognize yes. that figure. <laughs> yes, I modeled for that one in the oh, Iron Law. Really? The one yes. in the middle there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. or no, no. It's the other one. I yeah. think it's the one with the, it's the a man yeah, walking in that uh, landscape. The landscape, there's yeah. a big rock and it's leaning towards it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 But I, um, yes, yeah, because I, 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 think I that's was thinking that, that uh, that's why I was also wanted to tie this up to this idea of beauty because mm. recognizing that whole posture of the body mm. and the emotions involved with, with that, I think is part of what you can define as beautiful mm, that yeah. it's something we relate to yeah we rec when we i think when we experience beauty it's like about that recognizing a form of fittingness or harmony yeah you know with our own yeah emotions and or, it's yeah. in it's just uh, in our nature I, I think it's you know it's not maybe we're not conscious about it but uh yeah yeah it's natural uh, to be attracted to those things yeah because yeah. i think um Maybe this is just me a hang up for me, but uh, what I'm concerned with is that I think the concept of beauty can be misunderstood as just sort of making calm, pretty paintings mm. and and there's no drama there. there's no real mm. action going mm. on. there's no um, uh, pathos there because it's mm. just supposed to be pretty. But that's not what you're talking about with the idea of beauty, right? Mm. No, yeah, uh, yeah, because like, also, I think if you look at archetypes, for instance, and you can get so much inspira inspiration from that yeah. when you think about the archetypal events mm. or characters, you know. Mm. And uh, so, for instance, like birth or when you're separating from parents or falling in love, marriage yeah. and death, you know, all of these are very archetypal events. Yes. And uh, it's not like... A, you know, it's not all very sweet and just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it can be very yeah, dramatic, yeah. but uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's why you have this, uh, this um, overstated images. Yeah. Uh, for example, this idea of uh, killing the father, mm. which uh, can sound very modern, but, but which is just a very clear or one way to see it is a, Every, is a well, everyone has felt that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but yeah. it's uh, yeah, and it's. Um, I think it's a, a situation where you suddenly don't have that 
to look up to anymore because mm. you have become on that level and then what you look up for, to is sort of died. Mm. And then how do you deal with that psychologically? Because mm. I think I think you're right about that. These, these key moments in a human being's development or what you experience, yeah. and just to see that externalized in an, in an image yeah. can give you some kind of reassurance or comfort mm. or yeah it's like a representation of uh, the circle of life or, yeah. you know it's uh, something that we're related to anyway you know it's like yeah. Uh, yeah and if you like in movies they have to follow these uh, rules you know otherwise nobody would watch movies <laughs> they won't make so, money so <laughs> yes because i mean we never get tired of looking at the hero and uh, maybe that's partly because we want to uh, identify as the hero mm. in our own lives. We, mm. we like to, I don't know, reach for something uh, to improve ourselves, I guess. I don't know, but uh, I, I hope so. That's yes. what it is. So yeah. what made you, what do you think made, made you resonate, as I say, with Hans Heidel's image uh, that you've used as a sort of a... Uh, guiding uh, uh, idea here. Yeah, well, um, you, you basically made the exact same postures, right? Almost. Well, yeah. It's not uh, completely but, the same, but it's almost the same. Yeah. You see more yeah. of their faces in his painting. Right, because he at least turns. Yes. The yeah. Adam in that painting turns and, and mm. looks at what they've. What but they're I didn't living. want it to be personal. No. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, but I I didn't want to make it the exact same posture, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but I think that's, you know, maybe one of the world's uh, uh, greatest stories uh, of Adam and Eve, obviously. Mm. It's uh, maybe about uh, when we became conscious, basically. Mm. So, uh, yeah. And I hadn't made anything like that, so, yeah. yeah that's interesting that, that a mental change is described in physical action mm. so that yeah. you have that uh, i've been concerned with that at least that you have a painting has to have at least two levels one is the actual action going on but the action has to sort of be representative of a, of a psychological um, event somehow yeah so it's not just that they're walking there <laughs> yes yes yeah uh. i mean uh, if I if I if I didn't call it Adam and Eve, I don't. I I think I'm going to call it Outcasts. Yeah, that's what I had. Yeah, but in mind. You, but um, yeah. How do you work then? Uh, speaking of <coughs> of uh, uh, storytelling, um, because I see in the, in uh, your images that mm -hmm. you are. Uh, in some of them, there's not necessarily an action going on, but there's a clear mood. Mm. So you must have some kind of idea of what, what is the movement, what is the direction, what is going on here. Mm. And I'm just thinking just on a very particular level, like, do you think of that when you decide how the arm shall be raised, how much it shall crouch, or mm. how much, what kind of mental state they express yeah. when, when you place the arm there or there? Or uh, Yes, definitely. It's not... Uh yeah, I have some thoughts about that, you know, and yeah. I like also I look at sculptures a lot for inspiration because yeah. they're so uh, some of them like if you go to cemeteries or look at pictures from like Catholic cemeteries and stuff like that, you see all these beautiful, very sentimental uh, sculptures. Mm. And uh, I think that uh, can be very inspiring. And um, yeah. So basically looking at sculptures has been a, g a great inspiration, I think, because the movements and the, you get so many great poses yeah. and ideas. Yeah. So, the, so for example, well, that's why you chose... Um, um, uh, Roda. Roda. Yeah. Um, so you're looking uh, quite a bit at him as well. Mm, yeah, I have been... Uh, looking at him quite a lot actually <laughs> so, so yeah f for ideas when it comes to how the body moves yeah and uh yeah because i like how he uh yeah i like the movement in his uh, sculptures and i think they're so soft also you know it's yeah. not very uh, and yeah they're so you know so beautiful uh, with the 
softness and yeah. uh, so that so actually look, looking at sculpture also and it's just like uh, blurring into the background almost you know yeah yeah it's uh, and you so you try to transfer that the to you, the way you actually draw yeah 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 interesting yeah yeah and I also I look at uh, older painters of course and uh, yeah. Yeah, well, introduce mm. our next uh, guest Carrier. here. Carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene Carrier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know about him until I started studying with Odd. Yeah. And, um, and he was very uh, interested in him. And I was, and of course, I can see it is just uh, so beautiful. And the lack of colors oh, is yeah. very nice, I think. It's just a sepia. Yeah. He might, he might have been one of the painters who used uh, sort of a reddish ochre and just white and yeah, black, so that yeah. you have <laughs> just three so, colors. <laughs> they're so like uh, harmonious, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's just like a balance. It's so so nice to look at. Yeah. So uh, and I didn't know that they were actually friends, Roda and Carrier. And they were close friends. Mm. So maybe they, I guess, they inspired each other. Mm. Uh, but then yeah, no, uh, Karia made a lithograph, at least, of uh, Rodin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I know, yeah. And then Rodin, he became very famous, and uh, Karia, not so much, I mean, yeah. Mm. Have you looked in into his bio biography? Uh, no, no, not really. Mm. But it wasn't, uh, I mean, he had some but, position, I, I, I think, mean, but not... Yeah, but not not like uh, everybody knows, well, not everybody, but um, many people know Rodas' work. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but he's in Petit Palais, right, uh, yeah. Carrier? Yeah. yeah so he went to see them. What's that called? Old. The um, the Young Mothers. Yeah. A big one. The big one with all the figures. Yeah, yeah. They're walking in that yes. sort of park. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, I mean, if you if you ha have... It's like a dream. It's like, uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's dream images. Yeah. It yeah. is. It's that, uh, yeah. It's a different reality. And uh, you don't get that in um, photorealistic uh, works, you know. You don't get that other dimension. Yeah. yeah. It's just very... Um, everything is in focus. So everything is, uh, you know, it's it's a bit stressful to look at. I think. Yeah, yeah. If there's no uh, if there's no choosing of what is important. Yes. Yeah. Then it's uh, there's no story there. Yeah, yeah, and that's with Carrier. He he is focusing either on eyes or the mouth or you know in the portrait. Yeah. Mm. It's very obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he he gui really guides you to what what to look at. Mm. And that's when we d what we do ourselves as well when we look at someone, mm. like we look uh, at the eyes or. Yeah. yeah. How was that for you before you came to Odin? Uh, because it's, it's I know I did that made that mistake to think that uh, of, if you if you're going to be a classical painter you have to paint everything really exact yes. and uh, because it shall be real and <laughs> mm. <laughs> perfect and all this. Yeah. And I think, uh, for me at least, a big, big takeaway has been, mm. oh, it's not about that, it's about poetry, it's about choosing, it's about directing the attention. Mm. Yeah, I was also very, well, I could be very impressed with those kinds of work in the beginning, yeah. when I was younger. I was, but I didn't, I don't, I don't know what it, but I was impressed, you know, um, about, about the, you know, that they had spent so much time, oh, how much time did they spend on this? You know, I could be impressed by that, yeah. but I don't think I was really impressed by the the drawing or the painting itself. It's because it's uh, it's something you forget about it so quickly. I think a work yeah. that is too photo realistic. Yeah, I guess it's like being impressed by uh, someone with, with perfect grammar. And yes, he is actually able to write the words yeah. correctly. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Uh, yeah. It's not so interesting. Mm. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe after your first heartbreak, then you start to understand that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> photorealism is yeah. not the answer. Yeah, and also I was painting a lot from photo, you know, in the beginning. So, uh, right. and all, that's also hard if you do that all the time. It's hard to, to choose what to focus on, mm. obviously, because mm. everything is in focus in a photo. Mm. 
So uh, you can make something. I believe you can make something not look so photorealistic, even if you paint or draw from a photo. But um, then you have to be uh, conscious about what choices you are making, mm. you know, and what to focus on. Mm. So um, it can be. It's much harder than using a live model, I think, because mm. then it's more natural. You're just, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm. I've had to use it in some uh, portrait commissions. Mm. Uh, yeah, and then <laughs> then you understand why, or then then really re-understand why it's not a good yeah. thing to paint from sometimes photo. you have to cause yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a practical issue yeah. and it's and especially if the model is impatient and just wants mm. it wants the job done right? yeah uh, but but yeah uh, because I want to ask you about commissions uh, as well and how you relate to that but uh, but before that since we're talking about uh, your drawing and sort of going from place to place mm. um, maybe you could say something about how you work with compositions mm. like are you going to make this into painting or how, what's the typical steps you do when you're you want to make mm. a large composition several figures perhaps mm. yeah. Well, if uh, like in the beginning, I didn't make sketches at all. Like I didn't have a plan, really. Yeah. But then I I mostly just painted portraits. So you don't need a sketch before you have if you're going to paint a portrait necessarily. Mm. You know, you can just sketch it up on the canvas. So, uh, but with multiple figures, then uh, it's uh, it's you very have good. Problems. You have multiple <laughs> problems. Yes. <laughs> And then it can be very helpful to have a sketch. Uh, so I learned, yeah. you know, yeah. after a while. You learned the hard way? I learned the hard way. <laughs> so yeah, because I did start, I have this big painting uh, called Elysium. It's a big painting with uh, lots of figures bathing. That's yeah. one, right. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that one, I didn't make any sketch. How, how, so how big is that it? One. Uh, it's maybe uh, one... Uh, 170 by 150 or something. So that's uh, that, um, that's four, four, five feet by yeah. six yeah, feet or something like that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what it is yeah. in feet, but yeah. it, 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 it's very big. Yeah. So I, I, when I had that idea, I just had it in my head and I, uh, I just started. And then, of course, I moved and made a lot of cha changes underway because uh, something didn't work, you know, and uh, yeah. A lot of things didn't work. <laughs> so, so what the, what you did wrong was just to have no plan. Mm, That's yes. the easy answer. <laughs> I think so, because it's so much easier if you just make a small sketch and you... Because then you see so clearly what, uh, you know, what... Um, what works. Oh, some little... Yeah, 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 distance distances and, and placement. Yeah. It's much easier. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but I still make changes, even if I make sketches. You can still, uh, you know, change the painting completely, right. but uh, yeah. So, so you first you have an idea that just from your head, mm. and then like yeah, or I get an idea from paintings, you know, like in this case. Yes, yeah. like in that case or other paintings, and I can just I look at compositions and I'll see what uh, what movements is in the composition basically, mm. and I try to adapt that into mm. my uh, into my sketch right you know, yeah and then from there do you from the sketch go directly to the painting or do you indi do individual sketches or the figures or like no i just make one sketch <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Mostly>. <laughs> that's enough <laughs> um, it's so boring <laughs> yeah yeah i'm always very eager to start painting yeah. if i'm if i have a plan you know so yeah. i'm not spending that much time on sketches mm. but uh, well, if, if I have a, a commission, then maybe I spend a little bit more time on the sketches okay. because uh, then I let the, the, the people that commissioned the painting, I let them see the sketches, you know. And so if I have a very, a very simple sketch, then maybe they don't get that, the feel of what it will be like, you know, in the end. So then it can be good to, um, to make some more detailed sketches, I think. But then do you present drawings or to lure them in? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. To, to give them the uh, imp impression of, of what's going on. Yeah, 
I mean, it's uh, <laughs> people have no idea. <laughs> they, you, no. Did you hear? That? Speaking of that, I have to mention that story about. Um, oh my God! I forget names. Uh, what's his name again? Um, Tintoretto. Yeah. When they had this uh, commission for uh, for um, was it the the big paradise painting, and people had were going to present their sketches on this and this day, mm. and then when. Everybody came. He came with a finished painting <laughs> <laughs> because it was painting so fast, right? And yes. of course, it's, you wouldn't exactly put them on top with together with Titian and so. So for him, it wasn't so big a problem because he no. didn't have to work so much with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but then he got got the job because yeah. he could do it fast and cheap. Yeah. yeah. yeah anyways. Yeah. Um, so, so, but do you give them uh, 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 the client a charcoal drawing or the, to see or a more elaborate oil paint sketch? No, or? Uh, charcoal or uh, yeah. graphite, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not, uh, I don't paint sketches that much. Right. Yeah. I guess I could, I, um, I have been thinking about doing some watercolor sketches Yes, um, but I haven't uh, gotten that far yet. <laughs> no. But yeah, yeah, because the the advantage would be in that case that you get some sense of the direction of the color. Yes, yeah, and in this work. you get sense of placement, proportion, and then you can get some sense of color too. Mm. Yeah, mm. before yeah. you start. But like this one, I'm not. Uh, it's not a plan to make it into a painting okay. with this one. It's yeah. just a finished. Uh, because I love drawing as well. I'm very, uh, yeah. I think drawing is uh, great because it has doesn't have that much color. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that can be very yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, and looking at your drawings, I mean, I definitely understand that you're concerned with uh, Rodin uh, mm. and Carrier. Mm. Yeah. And if you have two hard lines, it, it, for anyone who has two hard lines, looking at Carrier would is yeah. like the opposite and then you can get the best of two worlds yeah. if you can <laughs> able if you're able to yeah. mix it just uh, try mm. to be a little bit looser mm. it's always hard yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like an extreme case I mean, yes. and he pulls it off it's yes but the best ones i think are very loose you yeah. know in their the way of painting it's uh the outlines are a little bit uh, vibrating almost yeah, yeah. and that's when it looks uh, so alive you know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that, uh, it's what they say about <coughs> people have been to, doing these uh, mushroom journeys that everything gets a glow and <laughs> melts together. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, seriously. You get that experience. Yeah, there's yeah. They could just look at the teacher, an old yeah. teacher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it starts, starts vibrating and glowing. Yeah. 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 No, but I, I I think there's a connection there. Uh, not that you have to do <laughs> mushrooms <laughs> up to people, but I mean to 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 have that that vibrancy and how things melt together and and melt into each other. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But um, okay, yes. Yeah, so so it's, uh, uh, and this is something I want to ask you because once you start doing commissions, there's also always these practical things and there's annoying demands from the customer and all this. Mm. And I want to just hear you talk about that because I think a lot of painters are wondering like what's the best approach. This is on a very practical, concrete level. Mm. Like like uh, if once you've shown them the sketch mm. and they say, okay, let's do it. We agree on the price and so. And like, what are your demands or what are you? What do you say as your? Uh, yeah. Well, they can. Um, pe I say that you know I make contracts. I've started doing that. To write contracts, written contracts, with, written contracts yeah, yeah. Uh, and then because then you're very uh, you know it's great for the artist and or the painter <laughs> but yeah. it's also good for the customer I think yeah. to be like to have like a yeah a written deal right and uh, so yeah so usually I say that they can they can come with some wishes you know if they see something in this in the sketch that they may be, you know, they would, they're thinking about something else, you know, a little bit. Then, of course, I can change something if it, if I think it is beneficial for the composition. Right. But uh, in the end, it's me that's going to sign it. So, uh, so it's, I have the last say, <laughs> right. you know. And you, and so, uh, so what, what, exp what do you actually say in the contract? <laughs> what like, what I are say? your demands? <laughs> no, yeah, well, I say that, um, 
I don't know if I've been that clear in the contract. <laughs> Maybe you should. Yeah. Maybe I should. Yes, uh, but uh, no. But I speak to people as well, so I they yeah. they understand. Usually, people understand. Like, mm. and they are usually very humble. If they're commissioning a painting, they're also very like, oh, I don't know any about anything about this. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you. They do don't what commission you, you and then look at you like, are you going to? Cheat usually me? not. <laughs> no. No, yeah. but uh, of course you never know with people. Yeah. Uh, suddenly they can't afford it anyway, and then, or something else, you know, happens. So they, so I, I when I do commissions, I divide um, the payment in three mm. usually, and then I, uh, so I, um, I send them the f first third of the of the payment they have to pay in advance mm. when I start uh, sketches and everything. Hmm. or after the sketch as well anyway when i start uh, progress and then uh, midway and then they see paintings uh, or pictures you know underway when i'm painting and stuff and uh, yeah and then in the end mm. when i uh, when they get the painting in the end the finished work and then that's the final <laughs> but how how is it you decide that it's finished now mm and then yes. as long as well they can have some minor changes perhaps and if mm. it's if it works in the painting mm. you you'll do it yeah. but if not you'll just say no this is finished now take it or not yeah. or yeah 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 i i haven't had any problems with that right, right. but uh but i mean if you come to a situation where there's some kind of disagreement like you ha you've received the two first payments yeah and they're not happy about the last part and there becomes some problem <laughs> Would you say, like, like what, what do you do then? Of or course, I will do my best to yeah. try and please yeah. the customer. Yeah. Well, I will try and, you know, yeah. I will stretch very far to uh, to make it, because I want them to be happy with the painting, obviously. Right. Yeah. So, so it's not like I'll be like, no, I'm finished now. <laughs> I'm the great genius. Yes, Don't I'm the great genius. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, will, uh, I, will do, I will do my best to listen to yeah. people. And especially also with the portrait uh, commissions, you know, because I, we, if you're, especially from photo, if you're doing portrait commissions, it's, uh, and it's not like a familiar face you're painting. So if the, if I'm doing like children's commissions, uh, many times I get this little, you know, p parents that want uh, paintings of their uh, p uh, children. Mm. And of course they know their faces very well so if they see that something is off, you know, with the, oh, I don't recognize that, then of course I, I trust them. <laughs> mm. yeah. 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 So, but with the big composition, then it's a little bit, then I can be a little bit more critical, I think. Yeah, if I get, uh, yeah. When you are actually people making don't the image. what they're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. But you haven't had uh, issues? I haven't had any issues no. yet. No. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I, because I was, I was thinking, um, yeah, I, I, it's always a question of the actual customer and, and the actual scale of the, mm. the commission and all mm. of these things. But, I mean, it, at some point also you could... I guess say that okay you can you can uh, model for this portrait mm. and then when I'm finished with it you can buy it if you're happy with it mm. but of course it's maybe that uh, then you're at the level where you can actually yeah really just decide <laughs> if yeah. you don't want it then fine uh, then you're just you're not uh, all in that situation uh, then right? then uh, yeah I couldn't mm. do that because mm. uh, I would uh, yeah, I would be working for free, yeah. basically. <laughs> and then in the end, you know, if somebody said, "Ah, oh, no, I actually bought a new television instead, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't afford it now," <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. So, uh, no, I have mouths to feed, <laughs> so I need, <laughs> I need to make sure I get some money. And then, of course, also if uh, if people, you know, midway say, "Oh no, I don't," which has never happened, like I said. Mm. But if that happens, then. The first payment I will keep. Right. You know they won't get that. That's not non-refundable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I don't uh, feel like I, it's been a complete waste of time. You know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that would be uh, that would be a bummer. Yeah. 
Oh God. People don't know how much, uh, how many hours it takes, you know, usually they're like, what? You spend a year on that or yeah. yeah. You had the commission quite recently, uh, which where you were, um, well, well, how was it? You were quite concerned with uh, Bastien Lepage mm. at that time because the the commission was to make paintings based off of his motifs or how, how was mm. that? No, uh, no, he didn't um, ask for that. Uh, it was just, I was looking at these um, peasant, uh, you know, style uh, paintings, all the uh, realists, I guess, it's, it's more like realism. Mm. Yeah, to to get that, uh, to look, uh, yeah, to look at that, um, what's it called? That atmosphere, you know, in the paintings. Because uh, the commission was, you know, to paint the sort of those type of images from uh, with the farmers, you know, and a little bit, uh, yeah. At least that's what I that's what inspired me to do that. So it was really it's open. for a hotel. It's uh, yeah. Okay. And it was uh, going to be based on a book, all the paintings. So I had to I listened to the audiobook and then. Uh, and then I had some ideas, you know, right. uh -huh. and then the book is very like uh, realistic, you know, very, yeah. So I, yeah. So right. I guess that's what just, uh, I felt like I wanted to look at those type of paintings. I didn't only look at his paintings, but uh, who did I look at? Uh, what are those other French? French uh, <laughs> <laughs> painters at yes. the time? Yeah. Oh, I have to so, figure out some names. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh. <laughs> I can't remember the names. I looked at a lot of paintings, yeah, yeah. not only yeah. him anyway. Yeah. And uh, but uh, I was in one of the paintings for that commission because it was going to be five paintings. And one of them was uh, very inspired by uh, Bastien Lepage yeah. uh, portrait. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Because uh, that's on your website, yeah. uh, isn't it? Yes. Uh, no, I don't um, know if I. It's not on my website. I don't think I have uh, posted it yet, actually. Okay, yeah. But you filmed it <laughs> in my studio. Yes, Borg yes, filmed yes, it, yeah. yes, right, 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 right. Mm. And people should know uh, your uh, website mm. is Atelier Norum. It's not... Uh, not yeah, Kaya yeah. Norum. Not Kaya Norum. Don't go there. <laughs> if you go there, you go to a different <laughs> got, type of expression. No, it was horrible. <laughs> it got I, I wrote it in and I thought, oh, God, uh, I got out of it very quick. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's oh. like I was looking at now. That's not Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> no. oh, God. oh God. Yeah. I hope not. Oh, yeah. And I, I made this catalogs, you know, mm. uh, with a little, uh, with a lot of pictures of my work in it. And uh, on the back of that catalog, it has that old oh, website no. address. It's so <laughs> annoying. Oh, so I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Because that's uh, horrible. Yeah. Someone's making a shitload of money on your name. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't understand how that uh, works um, even. Okay, know. well, that's uh, on the side now. But, but yes. Atelier Norum is your... AtelierNorum.com. Your... Yeah, yeah, right. That's my but, new address. <laughs> um, how is it with... Uh, sp speaking of these this values that you sort of were learned in school mm. uh, these modern values modern side modern ideas um, when it comes to commissions uh, what is your attitude to that because it's easy to, th to think that no it's not what I want to express and uh, it's not coming from me and uh, all these mm. these things I mean how do you <laughs> deal with it psychologically that uh, can you find an interest there or is it uh, is it can you get a commission and you think what on earth shall I do here and like yeah. how do you find your interest well, I, in it yeah like that one with the five paintings yeah. for instance yeah. it's, uh, I, of course, there are these universal uh, things happening in the book, yeah. you know. So I try to look for that yeah. to get inspired, obviously, because yeah. uh, and uh, you can find that, and you can find it if you look for it, basically. Mm. So um, yeah, so that that wasn't so hard, I think, to be become interested in it. Right. But. Um, yeah, and portraits. I love uh, painting portraits uh, from the start. So uh, if uh, yeah, so that's not a problem either. I think 
if I get the commission. Mm. Yeah. It's usually I can learn to like the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but usually it's yeah. the children, you know, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Then, then it's okay. Then it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you deal with the children's portraits? Uh, that's when you have to... Then I take pictures, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I find that it's easier to actually draw from pictures than to paint. Okay. Yeah, I think that... Why do you think so? Or that know. is? I don't know. It's yeah. just uh, then you don't need the color anyway. Yeah. And uh, the mm. colors get yet very different in pictures as well, I think, in photos. Yeah. They don't uh, look like that in real life. So... Right. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's we... It's one less thing to concern, <laughs> to be concerned about, I think, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And once you have the color, you sort of have the commitment to get that correct and that correct, yeah. and you sort of um, mm. yeah, become a copy yes. machine. Yeah. Yeah. You get too concerned with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did a portrait commission once with the, but the model was dead, so I was... Yeah. I can only use photos, but then I, I just told the client that, okay, I'm going to be as little inventive as possible and mm. not try to use a lot of f fancy strokes, but just sort of make it a bit more soft and, mm. Mm, mm. I guess, yes. poetic to the degree I could. That's yeah. actually a good, uh, yeah, that's always good to to try to be a little bit soft, Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. if you're painting. And you're photos. really good at that Yeah, in your portraits. Oh, thank you. Uh, I mean, generally, I'm mean, thinking about the images from your from your website. Uh, thank you. <laughs> this, hey, that's one one thing that uh, that uh, painting uh, constellation. Yes, that one. Uh, that's a strong image. That one is based on. We were going to have it here. It was yes, too big. It was too big for my yeah. car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was based on a sculpture, or actually, that was inspired by a sculpture by. Uh, I can't remember his name. He is uh, from one of the Slavi uh, countries, I think. It is. He's not famous, you know. It's okay. not. Uh, but it was. I think it, that was from like a cemetery. I oh. can't remember where I found it, but I found the picture online. Yeah. Yeah. So I I did the painting based on that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, and I didn't use any models. <laughs> I didn't. Not for that painting. Really? Yeah. I just uh, looked at the s picture of the sculpture and uh, and tried and looked at the f some paintings, you know, to try and see what the skin tones would, you know, right. should be so like. Copy paste from yeah. different sources. Mm. Yeah. And I work like that a lot, I think. I'd, uh, yeah. Mm. And also use your own face, you know, in, um, in paintings. But then change it so it doesn't really look like you that much mm. so I don't uh, I don't think I'm very tired of my own face <laughs> you know? I don't <coughs> and I don't think that it has that much character actually <laughs> it's just not yeah it's uh, like but when I'm yeah doing self portraits I try to make it a little bit more characteristic yeah 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 because th th that's also a issue right how much do you change and to what to, when do you sort of go too far or mm. uh, how much would you yeah because it has to be if it's going to be a self-portrait it has to look like you somehow also yeah at a certain point yeah uh, I, I guess yeah but i mean it's it's i did that with a portrait just recently self-portrait just re recently and i had the idea of tiresias uh, that blind seer yeah. And I was looking at the eyes and I was being very trying to get it correct because there was something wrong with the one eye. And then at a certain point, I just said, okay, forget this. And I changed it from my memory of a photo of a girl with a sort of weird eye disease with one really big eye and the other yeah. one almost compact. Mm. And then suddenly it fit because I had the idea of not just being a self-portrait, but mm. something that, that should be so-called expressed so it's our mood that should be there right? yeah yeah mm. Mm. and uh, yeah also it helps i think to to try to make yourself look a little older if you try yeah. to yeah How so? then uh, well then you get more character you know <laughs> <laughs> you get more <laughs> yeah the nose yeah. gets a little bigger or yeah you know 
<laughs> so that can be helpful, uh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we thought about that. Speaking of of uh, Rodin, uh, how how forms are manipulated. Mm. I mean, these humongous yes. hands and humongous feet, at least on the burgers of Calais. Yeah. Do you think about that? Yeah. When you work her. I well, I do think about that. I think Odd is very good with that as well, because it. I mean, the anatomy is not. Uh, not correct. <laughs> not correct, you know, but it still looks like so human, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, but if you saw that person walking on the street, you would be terrified. <laughs> so, <laughs> something really wrong here. Yes. So, and it's the same with uh, Roda. Yeah. yeah. That big feet and very yeah. big, uh, yeah. yeah. Very, but that's what makes it, I don't know what it is. Well, uh, what do you think? Uh, well, I'm thinking at least about. The, I guess it's a typical thing is with the big hands and the big feet that you really emphasize the weight yes. of the yes. body at least. Mm. And and emphasize when I mean, they're walking, obviously standing on their mm. feet, so you emphasize that. Mm. Um, and especially in the burgers of Calais, these big hands and that so mm. the, the expression of the hands in there and of course obviously in the faces too, but the hands are what you use to mm. operate in the world. Right? Mm. And it gives it literally more weight. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I think that that would be a, an example of how you can you can make a, a, sort of a psychological point through the, how you paint the body or how you, you manipulate the body, mm. Mm. so that you you get that you don't have to have a lot of action going on, but yeah. emphasizing things can give it more volume, inten yeah, intensity, and volume. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's true. I haven't thought about that, but the weight part is uh, that's true. Yeah, I think yeah. that's one aspect of it. Yeah, because you see old paintings, the figures they are so, you know, monumental. Uh, yeah. So it's. Uh, it's uh, actually, it's, it's almost on the opposite. In the last yeah. uh, yes. last years, with with um, is it Happy Boat that which it's called. Um, with the heads are one ninth of the body, mm. and you don't re really see it before you no. actually go in. Which and painting is that? Measure it. They're standing on their knees and looking with these robes, and then you see a boat far off. And I guess. Oh yes, yeah. The 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 one to the first to the right uh, has has like a uh, cloak or uh, almost covering the face and holding a rope, I think, yeah. uh, from the boat. Um, but in others too, mm. proportions are completely off mm. in, that, in that sense. But obviously, he pulls it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, he's amazing. I mean, uh, and he, I, I liked that he talked about that um, in one of your interviews. He said uh, that uh, masters at their best, they start looking alike each other. Yeah. So uh, I yeah. think that's also very. I haven't thought about that before, but that is very obvious. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you I mean you see it in um early Edward Monk, for example. So that means there is a, you know, highest level. Yes. And that uh yeah. Yes. And that goes back to what we've been talking about, uh speaking of the vibrancy of it and that, yes. that there's no h decisive hard lines or not too many of them at least. Mm. So that things vibrate and, and belong t together in that yes. room that you've created yeah. for them just makes perfect sense yeah, yeah. but yeah. Um, speaking of the, of that how was it possible for you to uh, get into the um, the uh, figurativas exhibition oh yeah or the competition actually yeah because I understand there's a lot of this much more oriented towards um, photorealism like, yeah right so tell us about that how you uh, well the first time with the consolation painting yeah, that was four years ago or something. I think. Yeah. I think it's four years ago, and Odd was in the jury at that time. Yeah, so uh, he said to me that uh, it was thanks to me that you and Molly got into the ex <laughs> to the exhibition. I was I was voting for you, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so uh, I think I I don't know what it was, you know. But um, most of the works in there then was. Uh, very photorealistic yeah but uh, i think there are some of the jurors um 
that like the you know our style also so i don't i don't know but uh i don't know what it is they uh, i don't know why they think that's you know so interesting because i don't i don't find it uh, i find it very boring you know yeah yeah I but it's, yeah. it's interesting to try to find out why it's boring mm. and maybe it's well one one guess is that it when they like we talked about when everything is is uh, given equal attention then there's mm. no direction and then there's there's nothing going on basically mm. but i i did react to it yeah. i mean we were you in that, in that exhibition in 2015 no. because they, they no. we're talking about the the Meam, um musee europe yeah, that's where it is. European uh, Arte Moderna. Yeah, yeah. modern Spanish. art. This European is Barcelona. Museum of Modern Art. Right. That's yeah. what it's called. And they are the ones who are arranging that figurativas mm. exhibition mm. Or, or competition. It's modern. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what, I, what, what that is. What I was going to say that uh, in 2015. It's so strange that they call it that. Yeah. I think they should call it representational art. Yeah. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know why. The, I guess they, they, are, they are concerned about being uh, accepted, maybe. Or getting, yeah. That's the issue I have with it. Because when we had that exhibition in 2015 at that museum, yeah. uh, Ordinary German Students, um, I remember coming there, and I don't remember the exact wording, but there was a big poster on, like, their statement mm. in the on the... Um, street level in, mm. um, in the in, in the reception there and it was something about that we believe that art shall reflect its time and it has to be a part Typical of developing. Typical cliches. Yes. yes and I think that's a perfect example that you maybe they did it deliberately maybe it's uh, maybe it is to you know to make sure that it will be you know we come in peace yes we, we, come we in are peace. like you yes yeah, yeah. It's it like when you be. have a little business. You I hope it is intentionally. Yeah, I mean, you have a little business. You put a, yeah. a BLM sign poster in the in the window so they want to trash your yeah. business, right? It's yeah. like a <laughs> don't attack. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because th that was so strange that, that if you're going to stand for something that is classical, then to suddenly bring in these principles, modernist principles, and mm. then you're not going in a classical direction. Mm. Right? Because I mean, obviously, working like this is not—it's not in some way not a question of style. No, it's a question of the mentality mm. of it, right? Because you can very well be figurative and extremely, quote unquote, modern. Mm. It's no no issue, issue at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm. I think it's a good thing that they uh, that they include. That my style of uh, paintings mm. anyway mm. Uh, so maybe it's uh, I don't I don't know I don't know if they're deliberately doing it or you know if they have an, ide an ideology or if they're yeah if they're aware of it I don't know yeah I, I'm not sure then you get back to the the situation where a lot of people just reiterate whatever is said yeah and there's no real thought behind it, mm. but they understand where the wind is blowing and, and mm. adjust accordingly. Mm. Yeah, because uh. me and Molly, we've been there. <laughs> we were exhibiting there also um, in another exhibition. We were invited to exhibit for this uh, women's, uh, women's Day or something like that. Yeah. It was like a national, <laughs> so all uh, female painters, of course. And um, so, yeah, and we exhibited there together. And that was after the figurativas last time. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I guess they, uh, it's good that they want both anyway, you know, mm. the photorealism and the, yeah. Yeah, I haven't checked out what they do in the, in the last uh, competitions, but... Um, like, I, I yeah, I mean, it's very... I, I wasn't surprised. Like this year, I'm going to be there. Uh, actually, it's it's in um, a couple, a few days only the okay. opening. Yeah. So I'm going to Barcelona in a few days. Right. Yes, for the opening. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't plan on going for the opening, but I actually won one of the prizes. 
and uh, I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I didn't expect that at all because uh, there are so many people um, that have uh, sent their works, you know, and been accepted to the exhibition and stuff. And uh, so when I learned that I was, uh, it, it's not like a money prize or anything, but it's um, this Chinese, uh, I think it's like an art magazine or something in China that is one of the sponsors. Of the Figurativa? Of the Figurativa. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. And they give one of the prizes, yeah. Right. So they picked like three or four of the works. Right. And then you get like a, publi a publication in their magazine, I think. Huh. That's like, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, it's, it's a f yeah, yeah. It's a good audience there <laughs> in China. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I uh, did an online workshop for some Chinese painters, uh, was it a year ago or something? And it's really amazing. You can see some of them are really painterly and mm -hmm. have that understanding of yeah, it. Yeah, maybe it, they are more into the classical uh, painting there. I don't know. From what I saw, yeah. some of them were really, ta really yeah. talented. Yeah. I mean, it's, one thing is that... that Sheng Wu, he's, also, he's so amazing. Case yeah. in point. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm. And there, I guess there are more more of him there i mean yeah. <laughs> more like him yeah. <laughs> more painters like him yeah, yeah. you knew what i mean yes yes and yes. suddenly there's come someone from so maybe, maybe that's the point that they're coming from china yeah uh and maybe have a slightly different take on what they see as quality and are not i don't know if they're concerned with photorealism or not but yeah i don't know yeah. i feel like they're more concerned with the more uh, classical painting style like old mm. nerd room they like that uh, mm. yeah that's my impression anyway mm. Mm. but i can't pronounce the the name of the price <laughs> you know <laughs> so i'm not gonna try <laughs> but uh, that is exciting yeah so then i have to be there for the opening to receive this um this uh, certificate or something i guess mm. Mm. okay yeah it gave me a reason to go to barcelona <laughs> yeah that's nice yeah but uh, then you return with all the glory and the honor to your studio. Yes. And how do you uh, deal with the everyday life after such a peak <laughs> in your career? Uh, seriously, uh, uh, how, how I, I want to ask you about that, that. How do you uh, like pass out your day? Like, how do you work with your uh, the things that you're working on? How do you, can can you spot your own mistakes or like do you communicate with others yeah. and ask and like? Yes. Uh... It can be, you can go blind when you work on something for too, for too long, yeah. I think. I think it's good to switch between paintings. So I do that uh, okay. a lot. And uh, especially I have to do that if I have commissions, because otherwise you'll go crazy <laughs> if mm. you're, yeah, just working on one piece. But uh, uh, I, I, ask, uh, I ask Molly for advice actually sometimes, I think, because yeah, she's some uh, painter I really admire. Uh, so she has helped me sometimes with some, if I had some issues. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, of course, I asked my husband. He doesn't know anything, but <laughs> I might as well ask him. No, but he can tell me also. He's very honest mm. if there's something wrong or, you know. So it's always good to have a second opinion, I think. Mm. And also to, uh, like I learned from Odd, uh, to compare yourself to other painters you know and compare works of other painters mm -hmm. and if you can identify the the qualities that makes one better than the other then then it can help you uh, improve your own work i think yeah so that's very helpful yeah just generally looking at like who would you normally look at uh, for that <sighs> would i look at uh, odds work obviously mm. And uh, like I like Bosnanskaya. Olga Bosnanskaya. Yeah. Olga Bosnanskaya. Uh, Mancini, I looked at his work uh, lately because I didn't know anything about him, uh, Antonio Mancini. Mm. I found him on, or he, he popped up on Instagram or something like that. Yeah. His works. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if he was. Uh, I, I haven't. I haven't been able to find a book on him, either. So I don't know, but uh, I think he is also very, you know, they look uh, quite a lot like each other, mm. their style. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. 
And uh, yeah, a lot of old masters, of course, yeah. Is this Furini a, I like as well. Furini? Yeah. Yeah. This is a bit like Furini, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this pose, yeah. It's amazing how it is. This really dark backgrounds and suddenly you have this shining figures. Yeah, it's so in that beautiful. Dark space, yeah. Mm, like glowing. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> But tell, tell me about uh, Molly Judd. Yes, she, uh, <laughs> me and Molly, you know, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. go way back. <laughs> yeah, no, we, uh, so we studied here together and uh, shared a room. So then you yeah. get very close to people, yeah. you know. Yeah. So she's one of my, uh, I think, my closest friends, yeah. even if she's living in Ireland. But um, we still uh, keep in touch frequently mm. and mm. Uh, go on trips together. We used to go on some trips, some little trips. We went to Florence. Um, that was like three years ago, yeah. I think. Uh, and she was going to exhibit in uh, Villa Bardini. Have you been there? No. No. It's very beautiful, like this castle almost, in on top of a hill in Florence. And um, she, so we met in Pisa Airport, and we were we were mainly gonna. I was going to help her stretch uh, her canvas i i don't think i helped her but anyway <laughs> i and we were going to drink wine and have a nice time you know so uh and that was so funny because uh, she had this huge painting with her rolled up in a tube because um and it was like hard to manage you know so we met in the pisa airport and we were going to get a taxi from there um into florence and uh nobody would take us you know because we had this huge tube with us so, <laughs> and then suddenly the lid fell off the tube in the in the bottom oh, no. and the whole painting slided wow. out onto the pavement <laughs> when we were in the taxi line oh, oh it was horrible and molly she was so stressed you know she was oh, like oh god of course i would be as well and um but then i was like no wait we'll we, I will find a solution, you know, and I'll, I think I, I, I can't really remember, but I think I just, uh, I, I flirted my way to the taxi <laughs> ride, <laughs> you know, I thought I, I have some tricks. <laughs> and then we, we got the, the ride eventually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was fun. And we had this Airbnb apartment mm -hmm. that uh, wasn't very big, but, you know, quite small and we uh, Molly she wasn't happy she wasn't completely happy with the painting so the day before the night before uh, we were going to bring it to the venue she uh, she just like rolled it out on the floor in the Airbnb and uh, and she just did some little final touches you know and she just asked me Kaya oh, I think it needs a snake in that corner can you can you just paint the snake there and I can work over here? <laughs> so that was also very it was so uh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great uh, <laughs> great memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, and we rolled it up and we yeah. brought it up there. Yeah. Mm. Joint venture. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's um not everybody knows that I think. I don't think anyone knows that I painted that snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great story. Yeah, it was funny. Uh, <laughs> and she's so talented, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, when, you, when you look at her, her work and you look at one thing that is so um, it's really a strength is the expressions. Mm. That she actually has different expressions on these figures, and they they appear to be acting completely naturally. Yes, it's yeah. it's not just oh I got the proportions correct and there's a face here, but there's an expression and sentimentality. There is a enormous sentimentality yes. in in the expressions that like this, the tears in the eye or the yeah, the, I know yeah. yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And the texture also. Of yeah. the You can see the strokes and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I mean, if you look at her Instagram account. Should never be afraid of sentimentality, mm. I guess. You know, I think so. You should uh, embrace it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because, uh, yeah, because that's what moves us, you know. Mm. So, yeah. 
I think that's a nice ending. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Kaya Norum, thank you for coming to the Cave of Pellis. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching. Remember to go to caveofpellis.com slash subscribe and become a member today. I'll see you next month.